one issue that scares so many people all around the world is the issue of weight gain from regular visits to the gym and some personal adjustments to diets. It has become important that people all around the world don't want to add weight because in several cases, this is one factor health-wise that leads to obesity. Let's speak with this doctor as we find some answers to several of these questions. We have an index for measuring it, which we call the body mass index. Take the weight of the patient, divide it by the height squared. That is the body mass index. And when you have somebody whose body mass index is between 25 to 30, you say the person is overweight. But when you have a mass index of between 30 and 40, you say the person is obese. So that the person who is overweight is not necessarily an obese patient. Then you now find that some people now, you do their body mass index and you get 40 and above. You say that that person has got morbid obesity. Overweight and obesity as defined as abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that presents a risk to health. A crude population measure of obesity is the body mass index, BMI, which is a person's weight in kilograms divided by the square of his or height in meters. A person with a BMI of 30 or more is generally considered obese, while a person with a BMI equal to or more than 25 is considered overweight. Overweight and obesity are major risk factors for a number of chronic diseases, including diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and cancer. Once considered a problem only in high-income countries, overweight and obesity are now dramatically on the rise in low- and middle-income countries, particularly in urban settings. Being extremely obese means you are especially likely to have health problems related to your weight. Although there are genetic and hormonal influences on body weight, obesity occurs when you take in more calories than you burn through exercise and normal daily activities. Your body stores these excess calories as fat. Obesity usually results from a combination of causes and contributing factors. For example, if you are not very active, you won't be able to burn so much calories. With a sedentary lifestyle, you can easily take in more calories every day than you use through exercise and normal daily activities. Also, having a diet that is high in calories, lacking in fruits and vegetables, full of fast food, missing breakfast and laden with high-calorie beverages and oversized portions all contribute to weight gain. During pregnancy, a woman's weight necessarily increases. Some women find this weight difficult to lose after the baby is born. This weight gain may contribute to the development of obesity in women. Also, too little sleep can cause changes in hormones that increase your appetite. You may also crave foods high in calories and carbohydrates, which can contribute to weight gain. Medication also plays a role. Some medications can lead to weight gain if you do not compensate through diet or activity. These medications include some antidepressants, anti-seizure, diabetes medications, antipsychotic medications, and the likes. Obesity can also sometimes be traced to a medical cause, such as preda willis syndrome, Cushing's syndrome, and other diseases and conditions. Some medical problems, such as arthritis, can lead to decreased activity, which may result in weight gain. A low metabolism is unlikely to cause obesity, as is having low thyroid function. Medically speaking, there are several factors that can be responsible for obesity. But the major factor is that you have energy intake and you have energy expenditure. If you find that your energy intake, your energy intake is more than your energy expenditure, you find that there will be deposition of fat. And that is what usually gives rise to obesity. But you find that even in children, you can have obesity. It could be just a familial, and it can be as a result of you're not doing anything. You will find that you are sedentary, and because of that, you are sitting down watching television all the time, you are not exercising. Then you'll find that you are not expending the fat that you are taking. Then you'll find that some other people the food that they take makes room for their obesity. However, the challenge is, at the other end of the malnutrition scale, obesity is one of today's most blatantly visible, yet most neglected, public health problems. Paradoxically, coexisting with undernutrition, an escalating global epidemic of overweight and obesity. Globesity, which is the new term found by experts. Globesity has become the new term. 
which is taking over many parts of the world. If immediate action is not taken, millions will suffer from an serious health disorders. Obesity is a complex condition, one with serious social and psychological dimensions that affects virtually all ages and socio-economic groups and threatens to overwhelm both developed and developing countries. As far back, in 1995, there were an estimated 200 million obese adults worldwide and another 18 million under 5 children classified as overweight. As of the year 2000, the number of obese adults has increased to over 300 million. Contrary to conventional wisdom, the obesity epidemic is not restricted to industrialized societies. In developing countries, it is estimated that over 115 million people suffer from obesity-related problems. Globalization, which is the inexorable spread of knowledge, technology, culture, and capital from country to country, has been a force both for good and ill, especially when it comes to matters of health. While globalization has lifted millions of people out of poverty by reducing hunger and infectious diseases, and in turn improving quality of life, the ill is that the same social and economic shifts that have increased people's wealth have also expanded their waistlines and continue to drive the obesity epidemic in countries like China, India, and other developing nations worldwide. The fried food and all the other, they help to stimulate your appetite. And you find that the more you take them, the more you take. And because you take them in between meals and all the other, the very food that you take that ought to be used for your energy output, they are not even uh, absorbed. So you find that that is where the food intake takes place. But having taken this uh, food, you need to exercise, you need to expand in either by walking and all the other. Listen, but if you don't uh, do it, there will be accumulation. So a sedentary life gives rise to obesity. Just sitting all the time, watching television and all the other is there. So serious it is that the WHO says in 2013, 42 million infants and young children were overweight or obese. The rate of increase is 30% higher in low- and middle-income countries than that of developed countries, even as 70 million young children will be overweight or obese by 2025 if current trends continue. Generally, although men may have higher rates of overweight, women have higher rates of obesity. For both, obesity poses a major risk for serious diet-related non-communicable diseases, including diabetes mellitus, cardiovascular disease, hypertension and stroke, and certain forms of cancer. Its health consequences range from increased risk of premature death to serious chronic conditions that reduce the overall quality of life. But is there a solution to this weighty issue? Number one, you have to exercise. You will find that it's not just a question of taking your car, driving about, walk, most of the time, so as to expend some of this energy. Exercise is a very key factor. Swimming, running, jogging, and all the other things. Watch what you eat. Because if you continue to eat all these junk foods and all the other, you'll find that you'll be just putting on weight without expending the... So that is the two main... Uh, this thing. Watch the food you take. Expend the energy. But you find that if uh, you have tried all these things and it's not working, there are some drugs that you take that will help you to reduce your weight. Basically, these two drugs, uh, these drugs act in two ways. Some act directly on the brain, which reduces your appetite. And so the amount of food that you eat is uh, reduced. Today, our world has been described as obesogenic, that is, an environment that promotes or even encourages obesity. As far back as the 1990s, the World Health Organization, WHO, had begun spearheading a series of expert and technical consultations on the menace of obesity. Public awareness campaigns were also initiated to sensitize policymakers, private sector partners, medical professionals, and the public at large. Aware that obesity is predominantly a social and environmental disease, WHO is helping to develop strategies that will make healthy choices easier to make. In collaboration with the University of Sydney, Australia, WHO is calculating the worldwide economic impact of overweight and obesity. It is also working with the University of Auckland in New Zealand to analyze the impact that globalization and rapid socio-economic transition have on nutrition and to identify the main political, socio-economic, cultural and physical factors which promote obesogenic environments.
But what is the role of the individual in fighting off obesity or overweight? Currently, food choices are made in an environment where unhealthy foods, those that are energy-dense but nutrient-poor, are the easy choice. These foods are widely available, well-marketed, not clearly labeled, relatively inexpensive and provided in large portion sizes. Food choices are automatic or habitual and are highly susceptible to what behavioral economists call status quo bias. People are more likely to choose the things they usually choose and it takes considerable cognitive input to circumvent the defaults. Currently, the food environment provides a wide array of energy-dense, easy default foods. In addition, evidence shows that people tend to place more emphasis on what is happening now than on the potential future benefits of foregoing immediate gratification. For example, when deciding whether to eat a bag of potato chips, most people think about how they currently feel, how hungry they are, and whether the chips will satiate that hunger. The average person is unlikely to be thinking about the delayed cost of eating that bag of chips, such as the effects on their waistline. So even if they intrinsically know that eating the chips will be detrimental to their weight, they will still favor the short-term gratification and ignore the long-term consequences. Plus, there is the challenge of exercise. The goal of treatment for obesity is weight loss. Exercise or exercising is an essential part of any weight loss program and should become a permanent part of your lifestyle. The benefits of exercise can include burning off calories and losing weight, maintaining muscle tone, increasing your metabolic rate, which is the amount of calories your body burns 24 hours a day, improving heart and lung function, increasing your sense of self-control, reducing your level of stress, increasing your ability to concentrate, improving your appearance, reducing depression, suppressing your appetite, helping you sleep better, preventing diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol, as well as decreasing your risk of some cancers such as breast, ovary, and colon. However, the kind of exercise you may need will be determined by an expert. The good news is that even modest weight loss can improve or prevent the health problems associated with obesity. Dietary changes, increased physical activity, and behavior changes can help you lose weight. Prescription medications or weight loss surgery also may be options for treating obesity. But just in case all efforts fail, Dr. Ihenye suggests what might be the last result and puts it in perspective. The other mechanism is that you take the drug and what the drug does is that it reduces the absorption of the food into the system. And when the food is not absorbed in that, uh, you find that you will begin to reduce uh, weight. And by and large, if after you have tried all these methods, it doesn't work, then you go to the surgeon. And the surgeon has a way of reducing the size of your stomach. You find that your ability to take very large quantity of food is minimized. And if this one is done, you will find that you reduce weight. So basically, exercise is very important. Watch the food you take. Reduce the amount of junk food you eat and eating in between meals. I am Uyi Agumofwegwe reporting.